Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. We have the Martin GPC, um, let me think. Oh yeah, 11E. Yes, the Martin GPC 11E. This is an all solid wood guitar from Martin for only $1,519 Canadian. That's not too bad. Taylor can't even compete with that. You're going to pay double the money easily. I know, been there, done that, wrote the book and burned it. <laughs> And uh, I gotta be honest, I'm not sure about buying another tailor. I might in future, but it would have to be one that I don't really wanna play very much because their frets don't tend to last for more than two years and you're gonna have to have them redressed or replaced. The best option is to actually replace them. Otherwise, the guy who's doing the work is gonna cut your nut slots too low, it's gonna turn into a buzz box, and you're gonna be PO'd like I was. So, mm, anyways. Um, but we also don't want tailors anymore anyway, preferably because their family and friend deal was a big screwball deal. However, if I do find a good deal on one, you know, I might consider another tailor eventually. So, um, what we're going to do here today is give you guys an update review, though, on this one instead of dissing Taylor any further. Um, now, I've had this one almost a year, and I've also upgraded the tuners to some really nice Geiger tuners with a bit higher turning ratio. Uh, because, hey, the higher the turn ratio, the better it's going to be for tuning stability, and it's not going to be so finicky and fussy to drive you mental, okay? So, nothing wrong with the stock tuners. I still have them, they're in a box, but I wanted gold because it looks better anyways, and I wanted the higher turning ratio um, because, yeah, higher, higher the ratio, the better it's gonna be for tuning stability regardless, so. Anyways, I promised you guys also a plugged in section as well eventually, and we are gonna do that today for you. Now, I've got my gain set um, around the middle-ish position, pretty close to that. Um, and of course, we do have the tone control in the middle. This way, it's, it's a balanced signal coming out of the guitar. The mixing console I'm plugged into, of course, is my new Yamaha. Uh, it's an MG12XU, and bass, mid, and treble on it are all at 12 o'clock. Zero effects. This way, it's going in straight dry, so you can get more of that natural sound of what this pickup actually can do. So without further ado, we need to shut off our microphone though so that it doesn't get interfered with. Okay, so there's your plugged in part of the demo that you guys all been waiting for for oh, quite a while, I'm sure. But I thought long-term review would be a very good idea because somebody's eventually gonna ask me. And I did wanna get the plugged in part of this done as well. My first initial video, we just played it, you know, straight out acoustic, not plugged in and voila. 
Um, it is a beautiful playing guitar, beautiful sounding guitar. I have really no issues with this thing. It's been doing fantastic. And even as far as fretware goes, you know, I've been putting a couple little minor, minor, minor little dings, and that's about it. And that's pretty good after a year of playing the snot out of this thing all the time. And, uh, well, almost all the time. I'd say the majority of the week when I am playing acoustic, this is definitely my go-to of anything else. I have two cheap, uh, what I call the Junker Beaver Creeks, which are all laminate guitars. And I use them for playing out in the cold live with or playing in the summertime outside because I could care less if they twist and warp or get damaged and when they do I just throw them in the fire pit and burn them and do another video and piss some people off like the last time <clears throat> that was fun anyways but my only other guitar I have for acoustic other than those two is of course my Ibanez which is all ash and uh, I do spin that off from time to time um, depends on the mood I'm in which guitar I'm going to bring uh, to church to play but mostly for the acoustics I am usually bringing this like 95% of the time uh, to play in church with. So, And I do play it at home all the time anyways. And when I'm teaching students in here, I usually grab this because it is the more comfy of the two uh, between this and the Ibanez because it's got a little bit more robust body and this is a lot more comfortable, more narrower, thinner. Um, so I do prefer this one between the two, but I do play the other one to spin off wear and tear at times for this one. Uh, because I want the frets to last but even with the spin-offs I had a number of tailors so I was able to spin them and even at that rate I still managed to kill the frets on one of my tailors within two years um, like all the frets because I, I play the entire fretboard um, but I also um, have where I use capos at times right and capos aren't exactly friendly to your frets either you know but between that and playing the whole fretboard and not being a heavy hander those frets should have lasted way more than two years before they needed to be serviced. The unfortunate part was when I sent it in, I gave them a note saying, replace the frets. And it was covered under warranty. Um, and it should be my right to have that done. And instead, the technician, he just decided in all of his little glory to go, oh, look, we're just going to file these things down flat as a pancake, recrown them, lower the guy's nut way too far, turn it into a buzz box, and it pissed me off to no end. That is not how a tailor trained technician should be doing his job. You do what the customer says, and when the customer's paying for that warranty, I believe the customer is in the right to have what they request to be done and done properly because I also know better that it should have been done that way. So that kind of pissed me off quite a bit. Um, but um, yeah, so I kind of thought, well, I know Martin's history. Martin does do amazing fret work. Um, let's see how amazing it still is after all this time because Martin has built themselves a huge reputation on building probably some of, well, they are actually the one of the most best guitars built in the world. There's not anybody that I know of yet that can technically outdo Martin um, when it comes to quality workmanship, build materials, sound. But then again, I mean, they are second in the world. They're not the top, top leader. Um, because there are people who will buy more of another brand because over the years or centuries, literally, because Martin's been around for, what, 200 years, um, people have changed their playing styles from the more traditional sound of these Martins to the more traditional, brighter sounding guitars, which would be like your Taylors and a few other brands out there. They're more modern players, so that's the only reason Martin would be you know, going from leader number one to, well, they're second in line now. Um, but, um, and Martin are very expensive guitars regardless, but, you know, you do kind of get what you pay for. And for 1500 bucks too, I thought, you know, 1500 that's pretty cheap for a Martin compared to years ago. Um, they were far more expensive uh, for even this same type of a guitar. But Martin also builds in Mexico now too. Uh, which is where the Road Series guitars come out of. They are made in Mexico, um, and they are fabulous guitars. And it's not my first Martin from Mexico. I also had, I think it was called the DRS-1. Uh, anyways, it's on my channel. If you just type in Martin Guitar on my channel, 
you'll find I've had a number of Martins and uh, one of them would be an all solid wood one. I paid about a grand for it. And uh, for an all solid wood guitar, even for a grand, that was a really nice guitar. Though it was a full size dreadnought and I'm kind of not into the whole dreadnought thing that much anymore. Other than these two Beaver Creeks, they were cheap, I didn't care. <laughs> and I'm not playing the whole fretboard out in the cold anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but um, I really like this thing. I think it's a really great guitar. The uh, upgrading of the tuners, I think, was probably one of my best investments on this thing. Um, nothing wrong with the stock tuners. They were chrome, lower turning ratio. These are a much higher turning ratio. And um, they're also gold, which actually looks better on every acoustic. <laughs> okay. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like it. I have no, no real qualms with it. I wish they did not put a tuner in this thing, though. Uh, because a, uh, an inborn tuner, I mean, let's get serious. It's kind of a, uh, a, a novelty thing more than anything. This thing is not a very sensitive tuner, though when you do tune your guitar, it is bang on. I will give it that, but it's the frustrational part of sitting here, you know, plucking your note consistently and turning little teeny weeny bits, and you have to be consistent with this tuner. I kid you not. If you do not do this and you're going to go and just and try and turn forget it you're never gonna get this thing in tune it's not gonna happen okay so your only other option is to put a snark tuner on well the thing is you can't buy this thing with it the inborn tuner uh, so it's kind of like you either use it or you don't I actually don't use this tuner anymore it's rare if I ever touch this tuner uh, if I forget to pack my tuner that's one thing I know this thing has it in there and I will put up with that frustration but otherwise that is probably the only bigger downside the pickup works really well through the sound system okay I set the tone control around the middle position same as the gain and that's all you get and they're hidden up inside the sound hole which is really nice too so they're out of your way you don't see them um, and you don't have this big preamp sitting up here now the only major gripe I have is right here with where the input jack is Martin, if you're listening and watching, smarten up. That was the stupidest thing you could ever do, putting a freaking input, output jack right where your strap happens to go. It is an annoyance like no end. Okay? <laughs> Other than that, it works fine. You know, you just got to get used to flipping your strap up, plugging it in, and, you know, that, that, that part is a bit annoying, I must say. Okay? But otherwise, it's great, and it works great. It sounds great. Now, of course, you guys can be your own judges on what you think of the pickup. It's entirely up to you. But it's more the preamp than it is the pickup anyways. Preamps make the difference. Now, I don't like to color the sound ahead of time, which is why I like things dead straight. Same as the mixing console right now with the channel I'm plugged into. Bass, mid, and treble are all at 12 o'clock because I'm not going to mess with the sound and try and make this thing sound like something that it's not. I want you to hear it exactly as this thing should sound like with everything at 12 o'clock. So, anyway, as far as everything else goes in life, I don't remember what I rated this thing at. It could have been a four and a half. It could have been a three, four or three quarter. I have to go back and check my own video, which I didn't even bother to do because I didn't see a point to it. But I would put it in that, that range between four and a half, four and three quarter, with my only major gripe is being that, that output jack and the way they placed it. That would be my only major gripe on this thing. Um, and of course, nothing's perfect anyways, right? Now, the strings I am using are the Martin uh, lifespan ones that come with it, and they're like a coated type string from Martin. Um, I have tried elixirs and uh, um, it destroys the sound, okay, like horrifying. Now, of course, that's in my opinion because that's not the sound I would expect, right? I expect that nice bright tone on a, on a tailor and it sounds perfect on a tailor. But using those same strings that the tailors use for the elixirs, uh, their NanoWeb phosphorus bronze coated strings, um, yeah, they don't sound good on these things. Um, Martin strings, Martin guitar, these things sound the best to me. I, I mean, I fell in love with this thing because of how it sounded and, you know, that bass response too. is It's nice and throbby. 
you know, and when they have me turned up in the PA too, I can even do some percussion stuff on this as well, you know, by just tapping in here, right? And uh, it actually comes through quite nice. Um, so yeah, it's kind of really, it's a good, I, I give it credit. It's a really good pickup and preamp in this thing. It works well. Um, the nuts cut right, no problems with the fret work, nice and smooth, no issues. Um, fantastic guitar in my opinion. I think it's worth every bit of the $1,500, okay? Now, they do have it in left and right handed, like all Martin guitars. You can get every Martin guitar left or right handed. It doesn't matter, right? Um, so, and the price is the same. It doesn't matter, left or right handed. It's the same price. So, it's like bonus. Um, I'm sure this probably won't be my last Martin. If I do get another Martin, it'll probably be only one more. Um, and I am thinking solid wood again. Um, I don't want another one with HPL. Um, that was the, I believe the X2E that I had. It was HPL back and sides, and then of course a solid top. Problem is, you have to be very, very cautious and careful with any guitar that's HPL back and sides, because um, humidity will not affect the HPL, but it will affect your top, and it can actually cause your top to peel off if you're not super cautious. So you actually have to balance that humidity level out between that 40 and 60% kind of range and keep it there consistently. Because otherwise, if it gets too much drier or too much wetter, you end up with a nightmare. Now, of course, being all solid wood, you do have to also treat them with kid gloves as well, keeping that humidity consistent so that things stay consistent, right? And you have that 40 to 60 range with these things where you have to keep them as much as you can at all times. You know, being a little outside the box for a few hours is not going to hurt anything, but if you're consistently outside of the areas, upper and lower, that's going to become a problem with any guitar, not just a Martin, okay? Um, but, either way, it's pretty good. So let's give you one more little play and we'll uh, call it a day. Catch you on the next one, guys. See ya.